I stood in the courtroom, the judge turned my way, looks like you're guilty, now what do you say? I spoke up, your honor, I have no defense. And that's when mercy walked in. Mercy walked in and pleaded my case. Called to the stand, God saving grace. The blood was presented that covered my sin, forgiven 
with mercy walked in. I stood there and I wondered, now how could this be, that someone so guilty had just been set free, my chains were broken, I felt born again. The moment that mercy walked in, oh, mercy walked in and pleaded my case, called to the stand, God saving grace, the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in oh the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in, mercy walked in. And all the people said, thank you, Doug. And this is a time of the year where we give thanks. We need to be thankful for all the talent that God has blessed this church with. And it's evident every time we come together when folks get up and use those talents and gifts to honor God with their voice. Take your Bibles, if you would, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 18. And the message this morning is about giving thanks to God. Folks, listen, I think one of the biggest sins we have as Christians and as Americans is the sin of ingratitude. We are blessed with so much. Tom and they, they sang that song, I am blessed. We are blessed. We really are blessed. God just opens the windows of heaven and pours out his blessings upon us. And a lot of times we just take everything that God does for us for granted. And then we mumble and grumble and complain because we don't have more. I want you to listen to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 18. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What's God's will concerning you and concerning me? That we be thankful people. That we say thank you to God. And that's just good manners, isn't it? When we're little, we ought to learn when somebody does something for us to say thank you. And every time God does something good for us, if we just say thank you, God. Folks, that is the art of thanksgiving. And we ought to be living that thanksgiving every single day. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. Heard a story the other day about this woman. Her and her husband hadn't been married very long. She was getting ready to cook her first Thanksgiving meal. Never had cooked a turkey before. So she called her mama, and her mama was trying to walk her through the process of how to cook a turkey, how to cook the dressing, and everything that goes with it. She had worked all day long. She came into the living room, said to her husband, said, the meal is almost ready. I want you to come and sit down at the table, and I'm going to go back in the kitchen, and I'm going to carry the turkey out first. And I'm going to set that turkey down on the table. Now, you know I have never in my life cooked a turkey before. 
if when I bring this turkey in and set it down on this table, I don't want you to say a word. If the turkey is not edible, we'll just get up from the table, put our coats on, and we'll go to a restaurant and we'll eat. But don't you say a word. Well, she went back in the kitchen. While she was in there getting everything ready, husband went and sat down at the table. She came back in from the kitchen into the dining room with the turkey, and as she walked in, she looked, and there sat her husband with his coat and his hat already on. (laughs) Now, men, I don't know about you, but if I had done that, I'd be eating by myself at Thanksgiving or at McDonald's for Thanksgiving. You know, the Thanksgiving meal really is what most people, when you think about Thanksgiving, most people think about that Thanksgiving meal. They think about gathering together with family or with friends and just coming around that table and enjoying all the food that has been cooked for them and to say, Lord, thank you for blessing us with all that we have. Folks, we are truly a blessed people. But especially here in America, we are a blessed people. You know, we can buy almost anything we want to buy if we have the money to buy it. We have the freedom to go where we want to go, when we want to go, and to do what we want to do most of the times when we want to do it. We are a blessed people. Most of the world can't get just get in the car and go where they want to go. Most of the world doesn't have the freedom to move about and do the things that you and I enjoy doing. We are a blessed people. And Thanksgiving is about counting our blessings and giving thanks to God for all that He's done for us. That's what Thanksgiving is about, being a thankful people and saying, God, just want to say thank you. We are blessed. Folks, we ought to be thankful every day, for every day, and for every meal, and for every gift from above. We are a blessed people. And there are so many blessings today. But now, I think this is the why most people have a sin of ingratitude when it comes to the things of God. Thanksgiving can only be possible if you take the time to remember God's blessings upon your life. If you do not take the time to count your blessings... If you don't take the time to look around and see how God has blessed you, you're not going to know how blessed you are. And if you don't know how blessed you are, then you're not going to be very thankful on Thanksgiving Day or any other day of the year. We need to remember how blessed we are. We need to count our blessings and know all that God has done for us. The sin of ingratitude is a big sin. (coughs) Heard a preacher on the radio the other day told this story. He said there was a preacher got up in front of his congregation. And he says, people, I want to tell you all something. If you will stop smoking, stop drinking, stop overeating, and if you'll stop cheating on your spouses, every one of you are going to live longer. He says the problem is somebody in this church has got to try it first to see if it works. That's what our biggest sin is, folks. Our biggest sin is a sin of ingratitude. It may may be greed. It may be lust. It may be materialism. It may be anger. It may be unforgiveness. It may be pride. But I think one sin every one of us are guilty of this morning is the sin of ingratitude. We do not realize how blessed we are. And if you don't realize how blessed you are, then you're not going to say, thank you, God, for all the blessings upon your life. Folks, listen, every one of us has reason today to give thanks. Every person in this room today has something for which you ought to 
be able to give thanks for today. If your alarm clock went off this morning and you heard it, you ought to be thankful because you were alive this morning when your alarm clock went off. And if your alarm clock went off this morning and you were able to get out of bed, get dressed, and come to church, you ought to be thankful. Folks, here in America especially, we have so much to be thankful for. We have so much for which just to stop and say, thank you. But as Americans, we need to make sure that we just don't say thank you for all that we have. We need to say thank you, God, for all that we have. I don't think God ever gets tired of hearing His people say, thank you, thank you. When we were having trunk or treat, a little boy come by the, the car, and I was sitting there, and he opened it. He said, trick or treat, and he opened up his bag, and I dropped some candy in it, and his grandmother was with him, and she said, now what are you supposed to say? He just kind of looked up at her real funny and said, I don't know. She said, you're supposed to say, thank you for the candy. little boy turned around and looked at me and said, thank you for the candy. And his grandmother said, we're trying to teach him to be able to say thank you for all that he receives. We need to learn a little bit of manners, especially when it comes to God. Folks, we don't tell God near enough, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Romans chapter 1, verse 10 through 22 says, now listen to this, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Think about what that's saying. The invisible things of God from the very creation of the world are clearly seen. And it says, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. <clears throat> because that when they knew God, they glorified Him, not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Do you, did you see what it says? It says the invisible qualities of God are clearly seen. Do you know what the invisible qualities of God are? The invisible qualities of God are the facts that God is exist, that God exists, and He is an all-powerful God. He is an all-wise creator. Folks, they're visible qualities of God that you and I can just look around us and see and just be able to say, thank you, God, for who you are. These last several nights have been clear nights. Have you looked up in the sky on a clear night? Have you looked up at the stars? You wonder who put those stars there and how they just stay where they are. Every one of them is in just right where they need to be. Folks, if you look at the stars, and this is the most, to me, the most beautiful time of the year that there is except for spring when everything starts budding. But you look at the trees. You look at how beautiful they are when the leaves begin to turn. You look at the animals. I was going home the other night. And just as I was going up Martell Road, I looked over to the side, and there's about seven or eight deer just standing there. I thought for a minute, well, those aren't real. And then one of them turned their head. Folks, when you look at the stars, when you look at the trees, somebody said anybody can paint a tree. Folks, listen, anybody can paint a tree, but only God can make a tree. When you look at all the invisible qualities of God that have been made visible in the things that he's created. You know that there is a powerful force behind all that's been created. And that powerful force is God. Folks, Mother Nature didn't create all this. And all this did, just didn't happen. When people realize that God is God and all that we have, we have because of God, people are going to be thankful to God for all that He gives us. How can anybody recognize God as God and not be thankful? If you really know God is God, you're going to be thankful. If you really can look around just see all that God has created, you're going to be thankful. 
we took Jackson to the mountains Friday, and we were riding up the mountains to see some snow. And I said, Jackson, look at the mountains. He said, I can't see the mountains. I said, why can't you see the mountains? He said, because they got too many trees on them. <laughs> he was so upset that he couldn't see the mountain because the mountains had trees on them. And that's the way you and I are a lot of times. We're not thankful for all that God has given us because we don't look at the big picture. Amen. Folks, we need to look at all that God has blessed us with. And if you recognize today that God is God and every good and perfect gift comes from God, you're going to fall down before Him and you're not only going to give Him thanks, but you're going to worship Him and you're going to praise Him because He is God. If giving thanks is the greatest virtue, then failing to give thanks is one huge sin. We need to say, thank you, God. Just like that grandmother told me at Trunk or Treat. I'm trying to teach him how to be thankful. Folks, you and I need to learn how to be thankful, especially when it comes to God. And the next thing I want you to understand about being thankful, we need to learn to be thankful in the presence of other people. Are you ashamed to be thankful in front of somebody else? In Acts chapter 27, verse 33 through 36, it says, and while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, and there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, listen, and gave thanks to God, in presence, in the presence of all of them. And when he had broken it, he began to eat, and they were all of good chair, cheer, and they took some meat. Did you hear what it says? It says that Paul took the food in front of everybody. He wasn't embarrassed. He wasn't ashamed. He took the bread, and he just said, God, I just want to thank you for this bread that we're about to eat. And then he broke that bread and he began to pass it out. And he said, I want you all to eat it. And then they all began to eat the bread. And it said they ate the bread of good cheer. I like the story about the little boy who was invited to his friend's house to eat supper one night. The two boys were playing in the house and finally the meal was ready and they all sat around the table together and they all when the food was set on the table, they all just started digging in, filling up their plates and eating. And the little boy just kind of sat there with a puzzled look on his face. And he said, hey, hey, wait a minute. Don't you all say a prayer before you eat? And the little boy's mama that had asked him to come over was kind of embarrassed. And she said, no, we don't take the time for that. And the little boy thought for a minute, and he said, you're just like my dog. You just start right in. <laughs> Folks, do you give God thanks in the presence of others? When you go out in a restaurant and eat, do you take the time to say, God, I want to thank you for the food? Or you just dig right in? You know, there's at least two things that happen, at least two things that happen. When you're out in public, when you're out in a restaurant, and you give thanks to God for the food that you're about to eat, number one, the first thing that happens is you are showing God that you're thankful for what you're about to eat. You're thankful to God for your food, and you want Him to bless it. Folks, you need to be thankful for your food, whether you're at home, whether you're out in a restaurant, or wherever you are. The second thing that happens is this. It shows to other people that you want to honor God by giving thanks to Him. The Bible says we are to let our light shine. A good way to let your light shine is when you go in a restaurant and you sit down and eat, you thank God for the food. You're being a blessing. You're also being a witness. 
giving thanks in a public place is being a witness to God for everything that He has given you, including your food. And folks, listen, you have to be thankful. You have to be thankful whether people notice it or not. Because God notices it. Whenever and wherever you are, God knows whether you have a thankful heart. And God blesses those who are humble and thankful. And folks, Christians of all people must be a people of thanksgiving because we live in a very unthankful world. We live in a world that is becoming more unthankful every day. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 and 4, it says, But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become of saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather of giving thanks." We live in a world where nothing is sacred anymore. We live in a world where people can't even talk anymore without using bad language. Have you ever noticed that? I mean, everywhere you go, you hear people talking. And and I'm talking about older people, middle-aged people. I'm talking about even younger people. Bad language is everywhere today. You hear it in the movies. You hear it on TV. You hear it coming out of people's mouths. Bob Carroll and I were sitting home the other day, and we'd been hearing about this movie. It's supposed to be funny. We was wanting to watch something funny, and I rented that movie, and it would have been one of the best movies I've ever seen. But every word that came out of every person's mouth in that movie was a bad word. Wasn't nothing bad in the movie, but the language was terrible. Folks, we're living in a world where there's all kinds of impurity. And as Christians, there must be, from you and me, thanksgiving and praise to God. We who belong to Jesus, to Jesus Christ, we who are saved, we must let our light shine before God. Folks, listen. We need to be quick to give thanks to God everywhere we are by praising Him and being thankful. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 11, it says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asked for bread, would it give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, would it give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? Folks, we need to be thankful today for everything we ask of God. That's what the woman was trying to teach her grandson at at Trick or Treat. He came up, Trick or Treat, got a piece of candy. She said, You say thank you. Folks, the Lord is the giver of every good and perfect gift. He wants to give us the things, not just that we ask for, but He wants to give us the things that we ask for that we truly need. And He wants to give us those things because He is our perfect Father in heaven. And once He gives those things to us, we've got to be thankful. We've got to learn to say, thank you, God. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're giving me. Folks, we need to be quick to remember to be thankful to God for all that He's done for us. And if we start experiencing thankfulness in an early age, 
It's going to make it a lot easier as we go through life to be thankful. And there's a lot of people today that are not learning good manners and not learning how to be thankful early in life. Parents need to teach their children to be thankful for everything. And parents need to teach their children good manners. And one of the best ways a child is to have manners is just to learn to say the words, thank you, thank you. And as children of God, we need to learn to be able to say to God, thank you, God. We need to have good manners. Folks, do you have anything today to give thanks to? to God for? Sure you do. Every one of us have reason to say, thank you, God, for what you've done for me. Thank you for what you've done for my family. Thank you for what you've done in, in your church. Do you have any reason today to give God praise? Sure you do. Bill Flurkey could stand up and say, praise the Lord. I walked to church today without a cane. Every one of us have something today we can praise the Lord for that we can be thankful for. Every one of us have gifts today that God has given us that we need to say, thank you, God, for those gifts. I'm kind of getting in my message for tonight. But I heard somebody say the other day, you know what I hate about the end of the year? What I hate about the end of the year is it means that a new year is going to get ready to start. And the reason I look forward, don't look forward to a new year starting because I know I'm going to have to start paying taxes all over again. And I'm going to have to work just about half a year just to, just to pay my taxes. You know what? As a Christian, you ought to be thankful today you can pay taxes. Because if you can pay taxes, you know what that means? You've got a job. Anybody gripe when you get the utility bill? You ought to be thankful you're warm. Folks, there's people up north north don't have electricity. There's people up north that don't have a roof over their head. And I heard this woman the other night say, we are so blessed. And here she is sitting in the middle of all this rubble. And she said, we are so blessed blessed she said I still have my life I still have my family God is so good even in the midst of losing everything she could say thank you God for your blessings upon me and we mumble and grumble when the thermostat's too low or we mumble and grumble when the thermostat is too high this morning, within 30 seconds this morning, 30 seconds, I know, somebody come up to me and said, Preacher, if you don't cut the heat up, I'm going to go home. And then within 30 seconds, somebody come up to me and said, Preacher, if you don't cut the air on, I am burning up. You can't please everybody. I'm burning up this morning but I'm just glad I can feel the heat. We need to be a thankful people. We are blessed. And we need to let God know how thankful we are for His blessings upon us. Take the time to count your blessings. If you go out and eat today, take the time to bow your head. And just say, God, I want to thank you for the food that you put before me. Now, don't do what I did one day. I was sitting in a restaurant one day by myself. And I got my food. And I just kind of sat down at the table right like that. A woman come over to me and said, are you sick? I said, no. She said, you look like you're sick. Can I help you? I said, no, I'm fine. I'm just saying a blessing. You know, a lot of people look at us and think, well, there's something wrong with that person. 
He ought to be eating. We need to be a thankful people. Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace upon us. Thank you today for all the good and perfect gifts that come down from heaven upon us. Thank you for how you've blessed us in this church service today. Thank you for Tristan. Thank you for Doug. Thank you for our choir. Thank you that we had an opportunity to come and and give tithes and offerings today. Thank you that we had an opportunity to get in our cars and drive to church today. That we got up out of a warm bed this morning in a a house uh, with a roof over our head and we're able to put on clean clothes. A lot of people don't even have clean clothes to put on this morning up north. Father, I just want to thank you for your goodness and grace upon us. Help us to learn good manners. Help us to count our many blessings, to name them one by one, and to say, thank you, Jesus. Father, if there's one in this service today that's lost without you, I pray today would be the day that they'd come and be saved. I pray for those, Father, that you might be leading to become a part of this church family. Thank you, for, Father, for the ones that you have sent to use their gifts and talents in this church to honor you and to cause your kingdom to grow. There's someone here today, Father, that feels that God is sending them to be a part of this church family. I pray that they come today. Say, this is where God wants me to worship and serve and fellowship. I don't know what's going through the hearts and minds of everyone that's in this place today, but, Father, have your way in our, in our heart. Have your way in our lives. Your will be done right now. Maybe it's just to come to the altar and just pray and say, thank you, God. Maybe it's to come with a burden and to pray. I'm thankful that we have a God in heaven who hears and answers our prayers today. Father, use this time of invitation to speak to us, your church. Have thine own way is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.